everyone. I'm Michelle from Jersey Shore Paint Party, and I hope you're excited to get started with your resin project. Um, it'd be a good idea to watch over the whole video first and then kind of go step by step after that. I want to go through the things that you should have in your kit first. Uh, you should have a bottle of resin and hardener marked one and two. I've already poured mine into the cups that have measurements on them which you will be doing. So you will also have those cups marked one and two. You will have a very large clear cup as well, which will be your mixing cup. You're, you'll have your artboard, which will be set upon four plastic containers so that the epoxy, if it drips, it doesn't stick your work to the surface. You will be mixing until the epoxy has completely mixed and you really have to mix well because it depends, the outcome of the curing depends on a, a good mix. So I'm going to show you how to mix the epoxy because it's a little different than just mixing something up. And what I'm going to do is I'm pouring number one in first and then I'll pour number two in. I'm just dumping it straight in give it a little time to drain the important thing to remember with epoxy is that it is a chemical reaction and you do have to follow the directions exactly as the chemical manufacturers state once that has drained i'm still going to go in with my large stirrer here and I'm gonna get the rest of that out I want to get everything I can out of this cup to be sure that my balance is correct I have I think I've got all of that and then number two Same thing, I let this drain down and then scrape the rest in. The proper way to mix this is not to go too fast, not to go too slow, but you do have to remember that you could have little areas in the corner of the bottom of the cup that don't get mixed well so that's why we have a certain technique that we're going to use so i'm going to start mixing and you'll see it kind of turns a little silvery and that's good because that means that you do have a one and a two if nothing happened you would have two ones or two twos so you can see it really looks it's pretty it's like like a uh, silver water if you look closely at it in the light, you'll see it's really like streaks of this silver look that seem greasy. So that is the chemicals starting to mix. And I'm making sure that I mix from the bottom up. I'm pulling up like when you are mixing, folding a recipe going all the way around. So you're scraping sides, scrape sides, pull up, make sure you're getting everything in the corners. Don't go too fast. If you go too fast and you get too many bubbles, they will dissipate later on the project, but they will make it hard to see if your epoxy is really clear or not. So I'm going to continue mixing this and when it's done, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to give you a close up of how we mix the paints. You'll have your batch completely mixed and we're going to first put the 
paint into the cups. So I'm just scraping the paint into the cups. You have four large cups and one small cup. The small cup is for the white. So you'll notice that you also have a little less paint for the white. Okay, so that's going into the cup. So I'm gonna put all my paint into the cups first. And you'll see why in a minute. Rule of thumb when you're adding paint or coloring to epoxy is no more than 10% of the amount of epoxy. So these are already measured out for you and you're going to put them in each cup. Keep your stirrers handy. Again, I'm doing now the dark blue. So you have four colors, the two blues, teal and gold, and then you have white. Okay. Last but not least, the teal. And get that all scraped out. So now we're going to divide the mix up into the cups. The white is going to get filled up about three quarters of the way. And then I'm pouring, pouring about half into each of these. I want to get an even amount of each. So once I pour half in there, I'm going to just take a little bit more and even them up. You're going to end up having about three quarters of a cup in each of three quarters of this cup. Okay, so if by chance you had a little more or less in one and wanted to pour it out, you could do it because the paint will not mix into the epoxy until you mix it. So when I'm stirring this, you'll notice that it looks ribbony, and we want to make sure that ribbon effect gets totally mixed in. So for each of these cups, I'm going to make sure they're very well mixed. And you'll see later on when you do get to the point of working with them on your project, you'll be giving it a stir just before you put it on your project. And here is the teal. It looks really cool, this marbling effect, but you don't want it to do that on your project. So you can see I'm really stirring it up. I want to make sure the paint is completely mixed into the epoxy. Now the gold is for your beach, and it really looks so pretty when you're mixing it. But again, you want to make sure you have gotten rid of any of those ribbony effects. Okay, that one's good. The white is the least, you use the least amount of white in the project, that's why your cup is smaller, because you're using this for the waves and the surf. And it also is about three quarters of the way full. Once they're all mixed, then you're going to go on to your next steps. So at this point, you should have everything cleared out of, out of the way because we will be working with the blow dryer in just a moment. I have all my paints mixed and ready to pour. You want to make sure you have some sticks handy to kind of give them a last minute stir. And you're going to start with the beach and then come to the far away end of the ocean and go back. So I'm going to start with my golden beach. Oh. Technically you have about half hour, 40 minutes to uh, keep this 
going and it'll be nice and fluid, but you want to not take that much time. You just want to get it all here on the board. And I'm letting this beach go on first so it gets settled. Again, I'm getting rid of all this stuff that might blow away when we get onto the blow dryer. Uh, you should have a little scraper kind of a tool that will help you to move, help, help the epoxy along. It does find its own level eventually, but just to make sure that it does cover, you can give a little, little help. I'm just going to kind of smooth it so that my lines go across the beach instead of the other way. And I'm giving my beach kind of a curvy edge. I'm happy with that. So that will settle. Now I'm going to the far end of the ocean and I'm starting to start to get this dark blue on there. The further away the water is from you, from the beach, the darker it's going to look. And I am going to pull some streams throughout the middle so there's uh, kind of like a meeting in the middle. The next color I'm using is the medium blue. And I'm starting that near the dark blue. And you can see it's starting to move around a bit. The epoxy's finding its own way. When you start this, you're not taking any break in the middle. This is, this is continuous. So if you want to look at this a couple times before you do actually do it before you've mixed your epoxy, that might be a good idea. So you should be familiar with it and you'll be able to keep working. I like to use the sticks to help it along. You can do that or that little spatula thing. You'll have both. And it will go over the edge. That's why we're lifted up on cups here so that your board doesn't stick to the plastic underneath or anything else. Okay. My last color will be this beautiful teal. And the teal is coming, I'll give it a little bit into there too. And I'm coming as close to the beach as I can. I don't want to let the beach mix into the teal. Gonna work that a little bit with the stick. You get everything out of your cup. You'll have extra in the end. It's interesting to like pour your extra on the plastic sheet and see the how the shapes peel off tomorrow. And remember, you're leaving this alone for at least at least 24 hours. You should really not even move it or touch it until it's cured for the three days. Okay, kind of thick on here. Getting closer to my beach. Okay, I'm gonna let some of my color kind of shift down. It's okay to manipulate the disc a little bit to get everything where you want it. You see as I'm moving it, eventually it just smooths right up. We want to get all this done and ready before we start with the, the blow dryer. So if you like to have the colors traveling throughout the different layers, you can just kind of pick some up and travel it about. So 
So I have now gotten to the beach line. And the last part will be the adding the white that will create the ocean waves. So I'm going to start down here. And down here, I'm pouring it right along the line, the beach line, the surf line, we'll call it. Okay, so that's a lot there. And then I'll bring up, I'm going to use the stick to kind of give me a little more control of where I'm going to put it. some more here. So we'll put here. Now if you like the look of a lot of crashing waves, you will just add a little bit more. You don't want to add too much white because if it starts to all mix together, you won't see the beauty of the swirling of the waves. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the blow dryer. I'm going to work from the beach side. I'm going to turn this so that you can see it from that side. I'm going to move the wind across the ocean from the beach. I'm going to start with the lowest setting and then I'll move up to the higher setting. And again, I don't want to do too much of this. One thing to remember is you should have control of your wire and don't uh, blast it on right away because you don't want to just, you want to try to control it a little more. So I'm starting on low. I've warmed it up so it's a little more fluid and now I'm going to hit the high blast and uh, you can do this very carefully a little at a time once you get the, the hang of it. some nice ocean rippling there and I think I'll add a little more white just to give it a little more drama back here saw how I changed direction a little bit you'll feel you'll get a feel for it once you start and I'm gonna work back now turn it so you can see it a little better. Now if you wanted to, you could add some crushed glass onto here, like maybe in the waves. Um, you have a couple starfish you can add if you like. Um, most people kind of just want the ocean look, but if you do decide to use your starfish, 
All you have to do is just settle it in. I got a little paint on that one. Oops. And give it a little accent there. Now, if you're using the mirror, same thing, just lightly um, sprinkle it until you see how much you like. So at this point, you're uh, you're complete, and you need to let this dry for three days. It needs to be covered or put someplace where it won't get um, any dust. Ideally, wherever you did it is the best place to keep it. Maybe if you have a Tupperware or something, you can just you know clear it out and put it over the top like one of those storage bins. Uh, we use that in the studio. And once this cures, it even looks more beautiful. So I want to thank you for going through this video. Now watch it a couple times to get comfortable with it. Um, real important to control your wire with the blow dryer. Make sure it's not running into your disc and ruining your patterns. So thanks again, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye now.